We have some dogwood here in the foreground and the Washington Monument in the background. And we're close to the Jefferson Memorial. And the famous Tidal Basin, which became, of course, uh, it's, you know, <laughs> it's, it's too bad it got this association, the old Tidal Basin, back in the early 70s. But for some people, it will be forever associated with Wilbur Mills and Fanny Fox. Fanny Fox being a, an Erst, the erstwhile stripper whose trade name was, I think, uh, the Argentine firecracker. Well, uh, <laughs> the congressman and uh, Fanny Fox were driving along, probably right along here one night, and I guess drink had been taken, and a police car pulled them over, and uh, Miss Fox, <laughs> seeking to um, uh, abscond herself, leapt into the tidal basin. So this lovely body of water is uh, <laughs> going to be forever associated with a stripper who jumped into it. Hello. Um, oh, look, here it says, uh, uh, at this site will be erected the Martin Luther King Memorial. I did not know that. I did not know that. The memorial will embody the man, the movement, and the message. It will honor this 20th century visionary who brought about change through the principles of nonviolence and equality. For all, it will be a memorial symbolizing promise and hope for a brighter future for humanity. <laughs> Funny to think uh, that you, just yesterday uh, there was a story in the news about how the King family was charging the Memorial Foundation $800,000 for using the Reverend King's likeness on the sculpture. I, what sense that makes certainly escaped me. But here we are, and uh, just look. I mean, this was very much FDR's memorial. This, this, FDR, Franklin Roosevelt, made this memorial happen. This was his, his pet project. And if we were standing on the front steps of the Jefferson, you would be looking straight across the mall right into the White House. And that was intentional. They had to, um, you know, around us here are, of course, the famous Japanese cherry blossoms. We're a little bit late. You can see just a, one or two remaining blossoms on this one. But the, um, these, of course, were uh, a gift of uh, the people of Japan. And for the extra point, do you remember why Japan gave us these? Well, it was a gift in, uh, as a way of saying thank you to the US and to Teddy Roosevelt for his role in brokering the end of the Sino-Russian uh, War, the war between Japan and, and Russia. Uh, sadly, after Pearl Harbor, some uh, patriotic Americans came down with hatchets and started to hack away at them, the idea being that anything Japanese was, was hateful. Fortunately, that was stopped before the um, vandalism went very far. But a, a funny little uh, story, one of my favorites, it, the, the uh, cherry trees originally, of course, went all around. This was before the Jefferson Memorial was built. And uh, when, they, when they set about the final, starting construction on the Jefferson Memorial, a bunch of, uh, I guess we'd call them tree-hugging uh, good ladies of Washington went and they were so upset at the prospect of the cherry trees being cut down to make the memorial that they chained themselves to the trees and uh, were refusing to, to move. Well, they, so they had a bit of a, careful this gentleman behind it, they had a little bit of a, a, a you know, a, a well, they had a, you know, how do we get, how do we get rid of the ladies? So I think it was FDR. I like to think it was FDR who came up with a very clever idea: send them refreshments. So they they plied them with lemonade and teas and a lot of liquid beverages. <laughs> and being proper ladies, the moment came when they had to, you know. Um, uh, answer the, the, the inevitable calls of nature. And as they did, as they unchained themselves serially from the trees, the 
the, uh, uh, the men with uh, chainsaws or whatever they used in those days moved in and had made short shrift of them. Anyway, I guess it shows that uh, as uh, uh, memorials are just like anything else, if you're going to build them, you're going to have to, uh, you can't make an omelet without cracking a few eggs. I find this one of the more moving memorials, and it's one of the, I think, less celebrated. But <clears throat> I find uh, a number of things poignant about it. <clears throat> one is that it, uh, you have uh, at one end of the, the mall, the Lincoln Memorial, and at the other extreme end, you have the Grant Memorial. General Grant was, you know, of course, the general who won the Civil War under the, uh, under the administration of Abraham Lincoln. So well, I think it's very um, appropriate that uh, these two great men face each other across uh, what is essentially America's front lawn. On another, another reason I find this very poignant is that this memorial, which is really quite vast and complex was the work of a sculptor, sculptor named Schrady who worked on this for 20 years and died uh, in large part of exhaustion two weeks before it was completed. And uh, adding another layer of poignancy to it, it was Sh Schrady's father, Dr. Schrady, who treated Grant during his final illness. Uh, he died of throat cancer and writing his memoirs, um, refusing pain medication so that he could stay alert. And uh, he wanted to leave his memoirs so, uh, as a means of supporting his family. Those memoirs, of course, were famously published by a, uh, an erstwhile writer named Mark Twain and made a huge amount of money. Uh, they made the, in today's dollars, they made the Grant's memoirs fetch the equivalent of $8.2 million, which is, I'm a writer, believe me, trust me, this is a lot of money. I note that our current president, Mr. Obama, uh, made $2.6 million last year from his books, and I say all power to him. It's, it's nice to have a, a famous writer in the White House. But I've always, I always uh, come down to the, to the Grant Memorial and uh, pay my respects. And finally, I'd point out an amazing, an amazing fact that it wasn't until Ronald Reagan's inaugural in January of 1981, and I was here, that a president gave an inaugural address from, uh, from, the, uh, 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 from this uh, here. Up until Reagan, it had always been on the uh, on the east uh, front of the Capitol, where you're looking out into like a parking lot. It's, it it boggles the it boggles the mind why no president until Reagan would have availed himself of this view on his inaugural day. I mean, just don't take my word for it. If you were being sworn in as president, wouldn't you rather look at this than a parking lot? Do you consider yourself a Washingtonian? Well, there's something, I, I, I would like to say yes. There's something, if you're from away, I'm from Connecticut originally, there's something about Washington, no matter how long you live here, that, that makes you feel still like a transient. But uh, I'm a very happy transient, if so, and I hope to, uh, I hope to end up here. I, I won't end up in Arlington, I don't think, and I, I don't think there'll be any memorials to me. That's, that's probably a, a safe enough bet. But there'll be one or two books at the uh, Barnes & Noble uh, that, uh, um, uh, that will uh, profess my love for this great city.